Hello and welcome to thepopray.com where I'm interviewing a very famous personality in Sri Lanka today, probably the foremost name in Sri Lankan tennis in recent times and uh, he's got uh, 16 years of representing the country at the Davis Cup, 51 ties, 94 matches also in the Davis Cup, a last, the last one a bittersweet uh, memory for you but he's played some nail-biting matches, he's brought Sri Lanka almost single-handedly through some of those Davis Cup ties, I speak of none other than Harshana Godamana. Harshana, welcome to the show. Thank you, Shanaka. Great to have you here. And you are now uh, one of the only Sri Lankans, well, three Sri Lankans before you, Arjun Fernando, Bernard Pinto, and now you, after many, many years, who have won the ITF Commitment Award. Can you tell us a bit more about that award and what it feels like? I mean, this is something, um, I think it's just uh, something I didn't really uh, work for and I didn't some, not something I aimed for. And also playing Davis Cup, it's such an honor. And I, I absolutely love playing for the country. I mean, the fact that tennis being an individual sport and there's very few opportunities that we have to play as a team you either in college or for your country so uh, the fact that I've I was fortunate enough to be in the Davis Cup team at an early age and uh, to play f play for this long I never thought I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna play for this long thankful injury free touch wood um, and this award is just I think it means a lot and I think in my acceptance speech I said that it's not it's not only for me and I think there's a lot of people who played a big part in my life and uh, it's more of a award for the whole country. Yeah, it is a fantastic achievement for the whole country and especially uh, for you as well. Arjun Fernando, before you, was he a guy that you grew up idolizing? Yes, Arjun actually stopped when I was pretty young. I did see him play a little bit but I didn't see, I didn't see all the big, big uh, things he's done. I mean, a lot of people talk about the crazy matches he's played and he's, he's beaten many big names in the past. And uh, of course, I knew who he was. I've always respected him for what he's done. But I guess I was unfortunate enough to see him play. I would love to have mm -hmm. seen him play if I could have. Yeah. And the other recipient, of course, Bernard Pinto, who would have been 90 uh, this year. But obviously, Harshana hasn't seen him play. But we all have seen Harshana play. And he has come through some amazing uh, games for Sri Lanka in the Davis Cup uh, previously. But this last one will be a bittersweet uh, memory for you. Uh, Harshana because it was 4-6, uh, 6-4, four, 7-9 six, six, four, in the third set tie break and uh, it was a loss to Indonesia in your third match of the tie. How did that feel? Very disappointed. <laughs> first uh, first of all, I mean, he was a... Uh, I had my chances. I had a lot of chances. Uh, even in the first set, he was serving at 5-4 and I had love 40. I didn't capitalize on that. Maybe he could have gone to tie break in the first set itself. And the second set, I was down 4-2 and I was still, you know, hanging there. I knew I still can make an, make an impact. And luckily, I got that second set. Uh, I just won four five, four, five games in a row. And in that tiebreaker, I mean, it's, it's hard to say because the fact that I haven't been playing too many tournaments in these similar conditions and on clay courts and this heat um, coming from the winter in the, in the U.S., um, it was so hard to believe that I can actually win this match. And in like many years ago, in this situation, I would enjoy so much more. Because at this time, I did enjoy at the same time, I was like in the back of my mind, I was like, ah, it's just, it's hard to actually believe even though I want to believe. Mm -hmm. Overall, I'm happy that I actually gave him a fight, given that he's a pro, he's been a pro all this time and he still is. So, uh, I mean, it's disappointing, but you know, you win some, you lose some, you gotta move on. Yeah, that's life. Uh, we have to move on, of course. But you've been moving on on the tennis court since the age of four. Harshana, tell us about how you got into the sport and what it's been like since. Uh, I got into the sport because of my brother, uh, Chamika Godamanda. He, uh, he used to play for Royal. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, I literally had tennis rackets hanging around my house. My sisters used to play just recreationally. My parents didn't do uh, tennis at all. Uh, but yeah, he got me into tennis. We have a little wall in our house, which is our neighbor's uh, living room. Mm -hmm. I used to play against the wall and they used to complain all the time, you know, you stop playing because we have visitors and it's too loud. But I never stopped and that, that, that wall was always dirty with like Tennis muddy, ball, marks, muddy yeah. ball marks. And, um, and also I used to play with my brother in the driveway, we put a little rope across and he's the one who got me into it. And uh, I think at 
I think when I was not that I can remember. This is what my parents say, but <laughs> at least when I was, I think when I was at the age of four, I started taking lessons from with Sylvester Francis, mm -hmm. and uh, ever since it was just you know I just kind of enjoyed the game overall, and I didn't think of more of a performance level. But um, after I won ten and under nationals, that's when I actually took it pretty seriously. So that's the age that you started realizing, okay, I might be good at this. Yes. yes. And Sylvester has been your coach throughout. Yes. Yeah. And how has that been? How has that experience been? How much has he contributed? I mean, he's he's I would say he's a very very um, strict coach, and a lot of people might not like him because he really pushes you. Mm -hmm. And I think he believed in my ability before I started believing myself. And uh, he used to always give me give me um, goals to achieve on court in a lesson. And sometimes I'm like, there's no way I can achieve this. And he's like, no, you can. I'm like. No, I can't. Like I would like kind of have arguments with him, saying that I can't. And he would like, no, you can. Until you do it, we're not going to stop. <laughs> so I think give, going back to those days, and I can relate to it now, how how well I control myself mentally. And I think all credit to him to uh, giving me targets and giving me uh, goals to achieve on court. Even though I didn't believe in myself, he wanted me to believe in myself. And uh, I think he's played a big part of part in my life, and uh, and now I can really say he's a good friend <laughs> more than a coach. I just tell him everything, and vice versa. He tells me too, and uh, I think uh, we still bounce off ideas for each other. And uh, he still supports me every time there's a match. He stops everything. He's there to support. So he's played a big part. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, it's been a long career, Arshana, as a player. Uh, what are your best memories of? Ooh. A lot. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for Davis Cup, uh, especially, I think the best memory for me is playing against New Zealand in 2010 in Sri Lanka. Because mm -hmm. uh, in 2008 is when I stopped playing professional. And I still knew, I mean, there was, I stopped playing just for mostly financial reasons. It was too expensive. I couldn't find sponsors and I had to, I had to let go. It was hard. It was heartbreaking, but too bad. I thought, you know what, I'll just find other passions in life. But the moment I heard we were playing Indonesia and uh, sorry, uh, New Zealand, and we are playing against players who are like top 300 in the world, and I'm like, I was forever pumped to play these guys because I just finished playing pro. I knew I can still hang in there. I want to prove something to myself. So, and when I, the first match I played was the first five setter I ever played in my in my career, and then I didn't know how to hydrate, and that was the last time I actually cramped. <laughs> Ever since that, I was like, okay, this is never going to happen again. I learned my, learned my lesson. And in that match itself, I was up two sets to one with a guy who was like 280 in the world. Um, and leading, leading the first couple of games in the fourth set, and I started cramping. Mm -hmm. And Rohan was on court with me. I was telling Rohan, you know what, I'm not, not giving up. There's no way. I'm winning this match. I know how to win this. I've, I'm two sets to one up. And up a break, um, I got to keep going. If, if, if happens so that I had to... I had to give up the fourth set, literally just give up in order to recover because I had one more set. That's the beauty of five sets. Yeah. It's such a long game. You can always come back. So I gave up the fourth set and I came back in the fifth. I kind of recovered in the, at the end of the fifth, but he was serving for the match at 5-4. I had a break point, didn't get it, and he won the next two points. The match was over. I was really disappointed. I was in tears, but still, I was just happy that I had actually pushed him. And the next day, Rajiv and I played the doubles. Mm -hmm. And my opponent was supposed to play doubles. He didn't play doubles thinking I, didn't pl I wouldn't play doubles. Okay. And he was shocked that I was on court because I was cramping the day before. He's like, how are you playing? I was like, I don't know, I'm here. <laughs> and, uh, and Rajiv and I won that match. And uh, it was 2-1 and then I had to play the, the similar situation like I played against Indonesia. I had to play the first match. And I beat the number one guy who was 225. Mm -hmm. I was down the first two sets, won the third and the fourth set. And I was up 3 love in the fifth and he crapped. Literally, they had to bring an ambulance to the court to take him to the hospital. <laughs> but uh, I think that was the best, best performance, I would say, in my Davis Cup career because those guys were up there, full-on professional. They're still playing pro ever, even since 2010. Um, but, I mean, it's just, when I put my mind into it, I feel like I believe that I can hang in with most of these players. And just also the, having the understanding that tennis is such an open skill sport. It's very difficult to play a certain pattern all the time because every shot is different. There's no two shots the same. And um, yeah, I think that, that has been my, by far, the biggest memory in, ten in Davis Cup. Fantastic. I, and you know what? I think I was there oh, yeah. in 2010. I remember you playing uh, New Zealand. I can't yeah. remember which match it was, whether it yeah. was the one you lost or the one you won. Yeah. But uh, I do remember 
being there at the SLT and <laughs> there was a huge crowd yeah, was uh, a huge present. Crowd. It was a fantastic uh, yeah. event. Um, new country, you've moved to uh, the US, you've been there for the last seven years in yeah. Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, how has that change affected A, your game and B, your life? Uh, I mean, when first of all, when I went to the US for college, it's not something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've always wanted to stay around here and then my parents kind of like pushed me to go. Uh, I was like, all right, cool. So I'll go. And my sister lives in Cambridge, which is in, in Boston. And that's one reason why I, went to, why I went to Boston specifically. And I thought of going to a warmer area. But uh, my sister's like, no, you go, you're coming here. I said, yeah, it's so cold there. How can I live there? She's like, no, you'll be fine. So now I like it. I've been there for seven years. I actually like the change. I like the cold and the warm weather uh, changed a little bit. And even, even when I went there, I literally took my rackets thinking, OK, I'll just play with whoever. I thought of getting out of tennis, but I guess destiny calls and I'm back in tennis again. I tried to look for a job after college, couldn't find one. I had a tennis job, a coaching job, which I'm still there right now after five years. Um, and I just, after the first year of coaching, I was like, I think I've, I just fell in love with it. And there are days where you get to the court, you're like really tired. And then once you see the kids and you see them just laughing and I'm like, you just forget you just forget all the tiredness you had, all the lethargicness you had, and you're back energetic. So I think it's more of a, I, don't, I can't even say it's work, because mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's very satisfying mm -hmm. to be on court and to see the, see the kids improve and see the kids being happy to be on court with you. And like, uh, you know, it's more of a friendship than work. I don't, I don't really feel it as work, and I'm really happy well, obviously, it's been very positive. But uh, one thing that we have to talk about your career, uh, Godda, you've been part of the scene for 16 years. You've been playing Davis yeah. Cup uh, for that long. But one thing that does kind of suggest, to take nothing away from you at all, but one thing that just suggests is there hasn't been anybody really challenging you as Sri Lanka's number one player for a long time. Mm -hmm. And what do you put that down to? I mean, it's hard. I mean, t as I said before, tennis is such an open skill sport, you know, and uh, there's so many things you got to deal with. You got to deal with yourself. You got to deal with the weather. You got to deal with the, the court surface. You got to deal with the different type of ball. You got to deal with the crowd. You got to deal uh, the list goes on. And even I was, I was actually talking, I've spoken to the guys before. I was like, guys, I'm no better than you guys. It's just the only difference is that I manage myself better. Mm. And uh, even though I'm in, a, I'm in a hole, I still believe that I can get out of it. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in a hole and if I don't believe I, don't, I can't get out of it, I will never get out of it. And I feel like the biggest difference of me from me to them is uh, the other younger players is that I think they, they have to believe in themselves a little more and uh, just trust in the process and just don't think about the result too much. Uh, you look back over the last 16 years or we'll look back over the last 20 years maybe. Uh, are you happy with what you see? Yes, yes. No regrets. Mm. I've done what I could do. I mean, I, maybe I could have played at a different level if I kept playing professional, but it is what it is. I'm happy with what I've, what I've learned so far. And of course, it's never stops learning. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just hope to help Sri Lanka tennis in the future. And apart from tennis, what's next for Harshana Godaman? Apart from tennis? Uh, <laughs> mostly, I mean, I'll, I'll still be in the tennis scene, mm. always. And I've told myself, you know, I can't compete at this level for the rest of, I mean, when I'm 45, 50, and I'm going to compete as much as I can, as, as long as I can, because I love competing. I'm a competitor, and I don't mind losing to anybody. I just love competing. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that there are a hundred different ways to play the game, and now I've adjusted so much. If I look at my game 10 years ago to now, it's completely different, because mm -hmm. uh, now I'm playing more of a, more of a very high-risk kind of a play and uh, mostly dictating completely on my terms and not letting my opponent dictate at all. But to answer your question after tennis, it's I think I still will be in tennis. <laughs> okay. I don't know if there's anything after tennis. Right. I think I'll always be in tennis. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it sounds like it's part of your life, <laughs> Arshim, and, and, and rightfully so, because you seem to approach the game with this so much equanimity. It's yeah. fantastic, and hopefully yeah. you will be able to uh, <laughs> help a lot of uh, Sri Lankan yeah, players hopefully. get uh, where you were and maybe even further, further than, definitely. than you were. So. Yeah. Uh, if you want to know why he did well in his sport, just, uh, just go back and listen again 
to what he has to say about how you approach uh, sport, the adaptability, the intensity, and just also being not afraid to lose. Those are the lessons I think that I took home from talking to you, Harshana. Uh, he's got a little bit more in common, not just uh, Roger Federer that has changed his game. Harshana says he's changed his game as well, but he's also got a little bit more in common with him because he's just won the ITF Commitment Award, the third Sri Lankan ever to do it. And we're very proud of you, Harshana, and very happy to have you on the Babra with us. Thank, Thank you very much. You.